Hi, I'm Michael Sinoff, founder and CEO of HardToFindSeminars.com. For the last five years, I've interviewed the world's best business and marketing minds. Now my challenge is to build the world's largest free resource for online, downloadable audio business interviews. I've learned a lot in the last five years, and today I'm going to show you the skills you need to survive. fall in love with your product, you are lost. Now, so that there's no confusion in your mind, I will repeat this again. If you fall in love with your product, you are lost. I'll repeat it a third time. Father, Mother, and Holy Ghost, if you fall in love with your product, you are lost. Now, if you fall in love with the market, you may be found. John Eager is a very brilliant man. John's probably one of the best strategists in marketing that I've ever come across. Um, I love him dearly. He's very, very clever. Listen very carefully to what he has to say. I have opinions about direct mail, and direct mail is a part of what my partner and I still do, but it is not the only thing that we do. And if it has to do with writing a letter and dropping it in the mail and hoping for the best, I have no... Uh, I have nothing more than ill-founded, untested opinions. If it has to do with making money in direct response, I have a lot of opinions, some of them tested, a few of them quite expensive, and some of them very profitable. Uh, the reality is that at the last uh, video boot camp, we discussed uh, for about five and a half hours over a period of four days why it is that you can't get to a market if you start with a product. And there are two pieces to that in my view. The first piece to that is that if you fall in love with your product, you are lost. Now, so that there's no confusion in your mind, I will repeat this again. If you fall in love with your product, you are lost. Now, if you fall in love with the market, you may be found. But that is a separate discussion. The second piece is, if you fall in love with the gizmos that make your product, you are not lost. You are in some, on, in some orbit, in an outer ring on Saturn. Okay? And the likelihood of the shuttle face, you know, fetching you back is very slim. And as far as making deposits or putting money in the bank or even having a problem with the IRS or even caring in the remotest way whether your tax returns are filed timely or not, you are out in left field. You will have nothing to count. Okay, so let me say this again so that there is no confusion. If you fall in love with the gizmos of your product, what your, the form your product is in, how you made it, the piece of equipment that made this little gizmo this way as opposed to that way, how cool or nifty all this technological stuff is, all of that, you are just in orbit someplace and, in my view, irredeemable. Now, the other point that I want to remind everybody is that the object of direct response is not to create this wonderful gizmo, both are chosen to be, to produce an income, the result of which can be predicted within an acceptable variance. Okay? That's what Ted talked about. He talked about building a publishing company accidentally, sort of, that would give him a predictable set of results if, if he found an ad that worked, he knew that above, somewhere above this line that said worked was a response that would more than pay for all the stuff underneath the line, the red stuff. The stuff none of us like to really admit. And that is what direct response, the idea of direct response is about. The idea of direct response is the idea of being in business, providing a product or service to an identifiable market which was identified first and not being seduced by a great accountant, good tax advice, the formation of a corporation, or any of that crap which people get absolutely sucked into and you get into some sort of Mobius strip and you go, you know, but you always forget to make the deposit. We have a company that was brought to us by somebody that Gary Halbert introduced us to. In fact, the basis for the company came out of Gary Halbert's newsletter. How do you know whether you love the product that you sell or you're in love with your product? Okay. Mm -hmm. For us, the distinction is whether we run the sale of the product by the numbers to make money, and when it doesn't, we cut it off and throw it away, or reconstitute it, rewrite it, redevelop it, find a new model, and invest the profits 
in bringing it back into the market again for a reliable, profitable result, or whether we are we are unwilling as as to, to face up to a child who is recalcitrant or truant or something to do whatever is necessary to bring this recalcitrant child into line. And in this environment, into line is a bottom line. It isn't how I feel about it. It's, is there any money left over at the end of the line? So there's a judgment, and, and there's a developmental thing. You have different attitudes at different times. When it was really wildly profitable, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. And when it got less profitable, we had to tighten it down and get serious, and we weren't making $200,000 a month just by being there. Then we got more serious, and we tightened it down more. And so it's developmental. When something really works, you love it. I mean, you're wild about it. But when something starts not working, your choice is you either get serious about this because that happens to somebody once, twice in a lifetime. Based on, based on an idea on Gary, in Gary Halbert's newsletter, uh, we have rolled out a company and a product that has produced gross revenues of very nearly $2 million in 11 months. But if you wanted to ask if there was net, the answer is yes. And did we like it? The answer was absolutely. And did we love it? Absolutely. And when we needed to tighten it, tighten it down, did we think, oh, it's given us so much joy in the past? No. We got out our wrenches, and if it stopped being profitable, we would make a business decision about whether to continue using that product as part of our business, or whether it reconstituted, have it rewritten, try new models, whatever. And part of our responsibility is to reinvest some of those profits in doing that all the time. So in my own experience, that's to some extent developmental, you change your mind as you go along. And But there is a conscious and specific decision to run something as a business always. We start with the market. Market is the first thing. Once you define the market, then you know what characteristics that market has that will support a product. That also gives you a pricing strategy. Now, we talk a lot, or Bill has spoken a lot, about having a product expensive enough to be worth selling. When Bill first sold his first $30 video, that seemed to him to be a king's ransom, and selling 3000 was, like, unbelievable, and it was just too marvelous for words. Well, now he wants to sell a $600 product, and he doesn't want to make more than less than $100 a phone call, and that's all fine, but that's where he is, and that's a good place to be. Okay, but the reality is, is that where you are, as long as you make money consistently doing whatever you're doing, developmentally, you'll get tired of the low end and you'll move up quite automatically on your own. And as I understand, one of the purposes of our seminar is to give you a broad view of different places so that you can plug in to an appropriate place for you. Some people have a real sensitivity to hard products. Some people like information products. Some people like the idea of finding a whole bunch of stuff that you can package or repackage. And all of those things have profit potential as long as you remember that the object of doing them is not the doing of it, but the effect of doing of it, the doing of it. The effect of doing it, ugh, oh, prepositions are going to kill me. And um, I can, as long as you understand that the object of doing it is to put money in the bank. Okay? Now, that leads me to one of my favorite topics, which is the marketing model, because if you can figure out how to get this product to that market, okay, then you are then then you are into the duck taking the water out and you're into sending me royalty checks. Okay, you're into making deposits and having tax problems and you know hobnobbing with the likes of Gary Halbert because I mean look I mean if you have a way to sell it then anything that fits this profile to that market or a market that is parallel to it will probably be able to be sold in that model. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word -word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.